The Lord be in your heart, and let such a way humbly proclaim this gospel, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples i tell you everyone who acknowledges acknowledges me before others the son of man also will acknowledge before the angels of god but whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of god and everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, before rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ignatius was Bishop of Antioch when he died around 110 AD. And tradition says that he was a disciple of John the Apostle. During the persecution of Christians in Antioch, Ignatius was arrested, and no one knows why, instead of being executed in Antioch, he was brought to Rome. And on the way, he met representatives of other Christian communities. He wrote letters addressed to these communities, one of which was his letter to Ephesus. And his letter to the Ephesians echoes what Paul wrote to the same community. Ignatius spoke of the importance of unity in the church which is why he calls for obedience to the bishop, the presbytery, and the deacons. And there seem to be a lot of false teaching, and Ignatius warns the officials to live according to the truth, listening only to Jesus Christ. We can conclude then that unity of the church is not unity at any cost, such that we will compromise so others will not be offended. But the unity of the church depends on the truth proclaimed by Jesus Christ. Ignatius warns that those who deceive do not speak the things of Christ, but of their own. And he says, he glorifies himself, for he is full of arrogance. And Ignatius has strong words to those whom he accuses of corrupting the doctrine of Christ, saying that they should all go, they shall all go into hell. Ignatius concludes, everyone that has received from God the power of discernment and yet follows an unskillful, an, an unskillful shepherd and receives a false opinion for the truth shall be punished. He is telling us that we need to learn our faith and not just rely on what people say, because in the end we will be held accountable for everything that we do, especially our errors. In the first reading, Paul also sees false teachings as dangerous, which is why he prays that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. When we know God, Paul says, the eyes of our heart are enlightened and we will know God has called us to the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, 
according to the working of his great power. God's power works in those who believe. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul uses the Greek word from where we get the word energy. So God's power energizes those who believe. This is why Ignatius says, faith cannot do the works of unbelief, nor be unbelief the works of faith. God's power make us faith, make our faith visible through our actions, which is why persecutions happen when we desire to know God. And Jesus warned his disciples to expect persecutions because persecutions are opportunities to hold on to our faith, trusting in the power of God that energizes us, speaking God's truth without fear. When persecutions come and we are called to defend ourselves, we are not to worry because the Spirit will give us words to say. This is why Ignatius encourages the church in Ephesus to meet together in the same place to destroy the powers of Satan and his fairy darts. St. Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians that faith is the shield that extinguishes the fairy darts of the devil. Communal worship encourages us, especially during times of persecution, or in today's case, times of pandemonium or pandemic. In chapter 9 of this letter, Ignatius wrote, Let our present and true joy be only this, to be found in Christ Jesus, that we may live truly. Do not at any time desire so much as even to breathe apart from him. For he is my hope, he is my boast, he is my never-failing riches. In this Eucharist, Jesus calls us to come back to him because he is our hope, our boast, our never-failing riches. Ignatius wrote that the Eucharist is breaking one and the same bread, which is the medicine of immortality and the antidote that prevents us from dying, but a cleansing remedy driving away evil that we should live in God through Jesus Christ. And so as the bread and wine are consecrated today, we ask Jesus to enter our lives and transform it. We may be discouraged. We may be afraid. We may even doubt the presence and the power of God to save. We may have lost our livelihood. We may have lost our health, or we may have lost our loved ones. These emotions are natural, and we do not need to feel ashamed. But we need to go past these, because we know that Jesus is with us. He wants to be the joy that conquers the sorrow. He wants to be the medicine that heals our wounds and pains. He may not tell us why we suffer, but he will be with us through the suffering. He wants to be the life in God, which the Psalm today tells us, one that is crowned with glory and honor. Jesus, our sovereign Lord has power to drive out the chaos, the darkness, the evil in our lives, and he calls you today. Now is the time to come back to Jesus. He will not give us joy because he is our joy. He will not give us peace because he is our peace. He will not give us life because he is our life. He gives us himself and that is all we need. Do not be afraid. Come home to Jesus and, he, and you will see him and know him. And as he promised, you will live in glory and honor in God through Jesus Christ our Lord.